This video is going to be discussing how to properly install your main bearings, thrust bearings, as well as checking your crankshaft end play. So this is part three of how to build a diesel engine. This video is going to be covering how to install your main bearings, thrust bearing, and check end play on the crankshaft after doing so. This will discuss as well the platinum kit that this kit and all the parts are coming out of. I uh, don't want to talk a lot before the video. Um, we'll just try to get right into it here. I also wanted to say thank you to Emilio who sent a donation at a depth tape at yahoo.com on PayPal and hope you enjoy the video. Thank you. So all the parts we're going to be using are coming out of a platinum kit. And Cat has these precious metal kits here, and this is what's inside of them, at least the platinum kit. We have your water pump, oil pump, cylinder head, head gasket, oil pan gasket, new head bolts. We've got your cylinder packs, injectors. We've got your main bearings, new thermostat, rod bearings. It even comes with a fuel filter and oil filter. But um, it doesn't have the primary fuel filter because those are always different. Now, this main bearing cap is number four. As you can see, it is labeled. And I clean it in the solvent tank as well as the bolts. And we're going to be reusing the bolts. And the bolts are supposed to be lubricated. You don't want to put them in dry. Now, Cat recommends either using motor oil or molly denim paste. And I like to mix molly denim and engine oil together. It gives it a good viscosity. And you don't have to drown the bolts in this. You just want to put it on the threads and then by the washer, under the washer, and over the washer on both bolts. Now, your new main bearings, all the bottoms are the same. Remember the different part numbers in the previous video. And what you're going to do is you're going to set the tabs, bearing tabs, and then press them into place. And that is it. You do not want to put anything behind the bearings. Nothing. You don't want to put oil. You don't want to put any sort of Loctite compound, anything. Now on top of the bearings, where the bearing surface is, you are gonna put either engine oil or assembly grease. Now Cat recommends engine oil, but I always use grease and so does everyone else. And the reason is, grease does not drip off. It'll stay there until you start the engine up. Now you don't have to put half a gallon on, you just need enough to cover the bearing and give it lubrication before the oil comes on. So. Just a little dab like that, and then you're going to smooth it around. You don't want to get it on the sides or between the bearing cap. Now, doing number four here, you can see it is cleaned thoroughly. I usually use a solvent sprayer or a brake clean can to just clean the heck out of it. You want this as clean as possible. Now, we're going to be installing the upper half of our main bearing, and we're also going to be installing, this is your upper half, and I've got a little of that white assembly lube on there. And then we're gonna be installing the thrust bearings. So you're gonna do the same way you do the bottom bearing, you're gonna do the top one, you're just gonna put that white assembly grease over it on the bearing side, not on the block side, just like that. You want the bearing back side to be dry. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to put it with the non-tab side first to the tab side if that makes sense. So we have the non-tab side of the bearing and the tab side in the engine. And then you're just gonna try and feed it in there. Now the hardest part's usually getting it started because it's kind of a tight fit. And you just have to uh, move it around a little bit until it just gets past that first lip there. And once it does, if you put pressure on it, it'll usually pop in there, pops in. Then you try to roll it around as far as you can by hand. I always try to do it by hand. Now you can use um, Cat makes a specialty tool the same for the remover or you can um, try to push it in by hand. I usually try to do them by hand. I don't like to uh, force these in. But towards the end you're almost always going to have to force it in with something. And the best thing to do is get a flat bladed screwdriver with no sharp edges. And then towards the end here you're just going to push it in. Now you should not have to hammer it in or anything like that some uh, some light pressure should push it in and you want to make sure it's seated and centered and the bearing tab goes in the tab hole also called a notch 
Now, it is properly seated. It shouldn't move. The best thing to do is not rotate the crank while your bearing upper is in there. And this is the number four journal. So this is going to have the uh, thrust bearings as well. So we're going to show you how to install those. Just making sure it's seated. Now remember the bearing notch and tab does not keep the bearing from rotating. The bearing is actually bigger than the hole that it's going into. And the compression of the upper and lower force keeps the bearing in place. So we have our thrust bearing here. There's, it says block side, which is obviously towards the block and not the crank. And the part numbers are the same. There's two of these. And you want to lubricate this as well. I use the white assembly grease. You can use, like I said, motor oil if you wish. Um, but like I said, it drips off. So I try to use this uh, assembly grease. Everyone I've known that's built engines uses the assembly grease. So we have our block side. It is uh, well lubricated. It's not, you know, I didn't dip it in a vat of that white stuff. You just have to use enough to cover it so it has some lubrication. Now, depending on where the crank is, if it's too far forward or back, your thrust bearing is probably not going to go in. So if you get a little heel bar or a large screwdriver, you can move the crank forward or back. So there, just move the crank. Now the thrust bearing should easily move in. And nothing really holds these in place until you get the cap on. So they just kind of sit up there. And sometimes they'll slide back out. But once you get both in, um, there's not a lot of free play. So let me push that back so I should get enough room to get the other one in. And when you slide it up in there, um, especially when both are in, they'll usually stay in place till you get the cap on. And then we're going to be measuring the end play after we get both thrust bearings in and the main cap on. Now this is the last main cap. I've already done the other six. So we have your rear thrust bearing there. I'm just going to slide it up. And the cats all use this style thrust bearing. I know some auto automotive applications, they use the, the uh, main bearing and the thrust bearing are one on one of the journals, but the cats have a separate one. So your uppers are done on number four. And the main bearing installation is all the same on all of them, even though there's different part numbers. So you're going to keep where the bearing and the bearing cap meat you want to keep that um, you don't want too much grease or oil or anything between those two surfaces so that's what I'm doing there I'm just making sure there's not a bunch of white grease in the way now we've already set up our main bearing cap now all the part number or not the part numbers the uh, bearing cap numbers are facing away from the camera here and your bearing notches they go on the same side so we have the bearing notch facing us and then the bearing notch facing us on the cap and so that's how we're going to install it. Now, the best way that I found to do it is put it up there, use the bolts to center it, then hold it in place, but don't force it up there yet. Then get the bolts started. This will help align the bearing when you set it in place. Because what you don't want to do is just try to push the bearing up there and then try to look for the bolts and have the bearing cap fall off a little bit. Because sometimes the bearing will stick then and if you just force the cap back up it might not center properly so i've used the bolts to center and i've now pushed the cap up in place and now i'm just gonna seat these i'm not hammering on these i'm just seating them now if you look there's a white thin line between the cap and the crankshaft that is where the white assembly grease has kind of squished out that's a good sign that means there's uniform uh, bearing gap now these torque to 110 foot-pounds, and then you have to torque turn them 60 degrees, which is one flat. So I like to torque it and go back and forth three times. You can go once or however many times you want. Um, you know, you're not gonna over torque these by rechecking it, but I always recheck it a couple times just because that's how I do it. Then I torque stripe it with this orange paint pen here made by Brightmark. And I usually go along the line of the main bearing cap. So you see the lines on my socket here? Those correlate with the ends of the flats. Now we're turning it one flat. Now some guys say not to use an impact. You know you're supposed to only hand tighten this, use a breaker bar. Well, everyone here uses an impact. Um, 
you're still applying the same amount of torque. So, we are torque turning it one flat, so line to line. When the next line lines up with the orange mark, it is turned. Then I torque strip it again. You can see the weird marks on the other main bearing cap bolts. Same thing I did. And this way it kind of double lets you know that, okay, it's going to torque turn. So the same thing with this one. And this one doesn't have a specific order. Now I'm just checking, making sure they're snug down properly. Going to torque stripe it. So those are done. Um, now, every time you do a main bearing, you want to rotate the crank. Uh, you don't have to go around 600 times. You just need to make sure that it rotates freely because if it's bound up, you know you have a problem. Now, we're not blueprinting these engines. We're not going to be using plastic gauge. We simply torque the bearings to what they're supposed to be. And then we check for end play and that the crankshaft moves freely. So what this dial indicator setup here is going to be telling us is the back and forth movement allowance in the crankshaft set up by your thrust bearings. Now you can't see the numbers, but we're going to push the crank forward and then push it back and see what it is in thousands. And it should be between four thousandths and twenty thousandths. Now, you see the dial there? It moved. And it moved eight thousandths, which means this crankshaft has the proper amount of end play. And it spins freely, so the main bearings have been installed properly, as well as the thrust bearings. This bottom end has been assembled correctly, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.